18, First Samuel chapter 18. I'll read verse 5, verse 14, verse 15, and verse 30. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, First Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, verse 15, and verse 30. Verse 4. Samuel chapter 18 verse 5. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. By the way, I'm reading from the New King James Version. So some of the translations might be slightly different, especially the word wisely might be prospered. But let's stick with the New King James Version. And David went out wherever Saul went, sent him and behaved wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war. And it was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Verse 14. And David behaved wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Verse 15. Therefore, when Saul saw that he behaved very wisely, he was afraid of him. Verse 30. Then the princes of the Philistines went out to war, and so it was, whenever they went out, that David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name became highly esteemed. What do you think the title of the message might be about? <laughs> when we were having the prayer meeting and um, the Lord gave us some word, we are still pressing through, praying through, studying, um, so that we can do what we need to do to actualize that prophecy. And one of the prophets, let me repeat those prophecies again. The first one was, I trust you, you've been tested and found faithful. I'll trust you with higher and bigger responsibilities. The second one is uh, a prayer that God should help us to see opportunities that are camouflaged as challenges. And then the third one, there are people temporarily occupying your position it is time to occupy them. And they were praying that God will create an opening and vacancy for us. Um, and this message is titled, actually, I haven't quite put this title together. I just have a message. <laughs> okay, let's find a good title for it. I know it has to do with behaving yourself wisely. So, what about behaving yourself wisely as you transit to take your position? All right, it's a long one, but yeah, that will do. Don't ask me to repeat it too. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We give you praise, we worship, and we adore you. Holy Spirit, take control. We thank you for the word of encouragement and the prophetic word. You said that we should not despise prophecies, and we should test them as well. And we just come before you that you would open our eyes, O oh God and give us individual understanding of what this prophecy means for us and how the practical tips, steps that we should take in behaving ourselves wisely, in behaving ourselves in a way that we prosper in seeing the manifestation of the word that you have already spoken concerning us. We pray that as we do this, Father, every area, O oh God, that you have already prepared for us in ministry, in marriage, in family life, business, in career, in relationships, in every area, in education. We ask, oh God, in health, we ask, oh God Almighty, that you give us understanding, that you speak to us by your word. Let your word come forth with power, with accuracy, with simplicity. Let it do a work of healing, deliverance. Let it do a work of salvation in the life of your people. Break down your word onto us in biteable sizes. Help us to be able to ingest it, digest it to meditate upon it. Help us, Father, to see the manifestation of your word in our lives. Let your word become flesh to us. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 So, David behaved himself wisely and David prospered. The background to this 
um, you can see in First Samuel chapter chapter seventeen, um, and, and, and the context is that David was a shepherd boy. Before this, God had already rejected Saul. All right, had rejected Saul, and the kingdom had been taken away from Saul and his family, and God had already anointed David as king. But David did not get into the throne as king, especially the throne over all the 12 tribes of Israel, until about 13 years later. So there was a period, you know, that for him was like a wilderness period, from when the promise or the prophecy or the assignment, the anointing came, and when it was fully fulfilled. So there was a period. But during that period, David faced all sorts of things. All right? And anyone that did not have the word would have backed out, could have messed it up, could have taken it by the flesh. After all, has Samuel not poured oil on me and prophesied that I'm the king? What are we waiting for? Let's take the throne and let's take it now. So, move aside. <laughs> the king has arrived. But David behaved himself wisely. From the point that David was anointed by Saul, I mean, sorry, by Samuel to be king, the kingdom was his, the throne was his. All right? But that throne had somebody else currently physically occupying it, whose name was Saul. So you see where the prophecy is coming through and what we're trying to do now? So how did David do it? So much so that God, in at least, on at least four occasions, gave a testimony through the Bible that David behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. David behaved himself wisely. And on each occasion that the Bible says that, there was a context in which that statement was made. When you see a statement repeated in the Bible more than once, pay attention. The Bible says once you have spoken, twice have I heard. What about when it's put four times on the same thing? Do the multiplication. So that's an emphasis there. So there's something that God is trying to bring to us through this. So David had been anointed by Samuel as king, but he was still a shepherd boy. Then his father sent him to take goods, uh, supplies to his big brothers who were in the battle, who were in the in the in the army, all right, of Israel. That was the that was that was, and then for him to check up on their welfare and bring reports back to the father. That was the to Jesse. That was that was the mission. So David was minding his business. He was in the course of his regular work, even though the word had gone on, even though the prophecy had gone on, even though he had already been anointed as king. But he waited on God's timing, he waited on God's instruction, he waited on God's guidance. Now this is not an excuse to sit back and do nothing. It is not. Because by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, there are occasions when God will say, okay, now I want you to do A, B, C. Don't say, but I'm still waiting. So the key is to know what the Holy Spirit is saying at any particular time. So, and when David got to the, to the battle, Again, you know the story, it's all there in 1 Samuel chapter 17. There was Goliath, the Philistine from Gath, who was the champion of the Philistine army. He was a tall guy, he was a giant. And he would come out each time, and he would do boom, 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 boom. And he would bellow across the valley to the armies of Saul, that's what David called him. And he would say, do you have a champion amongst your beasts? Let him come and take me on. If he can defeat me, then we're your slaves, then you've won. But if you don't, then you are in trouble. And then it will go back. And then the following day it will come out again. Boo, 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 boo. And it did this over and over again. Now, I don't understand what battle was like, uh, war was like in those days, you know? But that was how it was done. And, but the children of Israel, the armies of Israel, they were afraid because he was a giant. And, and he was a renowned man of war. All right? Can you imagine? God has already given David a promise, a prophecy, a word, an anointing, a calling. And here was Goliath standing in the way. Now, David did not connect Goliath with the calling. He did not. But David loved God. 
And in his own way, he was very dutiful over what he was given. What he was given at that time was to be a shepherd over sheep. That was his job. And he was so dutiful about it under God that God empowered him to be one of the best shepherds that there was. So what is it that God has given you to do for now? Be the best under God in that area. Because the testimonies that come out of that are going to be useful for the next stage. Amen. And David, I don't even know whether his big brothers knew about some of the things that were happening when he was minding the sheep. He said, a lion, a lion, no. lion. I mean, some of us, we see lion in the zoo. They're in the zoo, in the cage. We still put distance. <laughs> All right, just in case. He said, the lion came after the sheep. And he went after the lion and killed the lion. A bear came after the sheep. He went after the bear and killed the bear. How do you think he did this? Obviously, he was killed. But I think also because he was a worshiper of God and a lover of God, God has something to do with it. Such was his relationship with God that the challenges that came in the current area of his responsibilities, God empowered him to overcome them. What are the challenges that you are facing in your current area of responsibility? In what way are you bringing God into it to empower you to overcome it? Those, the testimonies that come out of that are going to become very vital to the next stage that God is taking you to. Do not despise the days of small beginnings, the Bible says. Though I'm not quite sure you can call killing a lion and bear small beginnings. <laughs> this one sounds like big beginnings for some people. But that's the point. Maybe to you, that thing looks like a lion and it looks like a bear. But God is still in it. And is able to empower you to overcome it. We will possess all that God has for us. But he's giving us practical tips, wisdom, on how to approach these things. So that was the setting. So David went to battle, not to fight, but again, you can see, even though he's been anointed as king over Israel, he was still running errands for his father. Some of us, if we have such anointing and such assignment, everybody will know. You know, but he was humble. He still submitted himself to authority. Parental authority, and as we'll find out later, kingly authority. In spite of what he knows, in spite of the power that God has already put upon him. And when he got there, and the, the, the oldest brother, Eliab, began to uh, have other ideas as to what David's motive was for. Now, you, you know the rest of the story. David took down Goliath, uh, not by the weapons of warfare of the people of Israel, or the armies of Israel, but by what he knows. Mm -hmm. He was a shepherd. He had a shepherd's bag. In that shepherd's bag are stones. And he had a sling. And with the sling and five stones, he took down Goliath, that the whole army of Israel could not take down. Mm -hmm. With all their armor, their swords, their, their spears, their, their shields, their helmets. Mm -hmm. And they were bigger than David. Mm -hmm. what, how do you know God? What's your relationship with God? In what ways have God helped you to overcome in your current situation? Sometimes you don't need new things. You just need God. What you know of God. How you know of God. The faith that you have in God. Many times some people think it is something else outside of there that I need to get before I can deal with this situation. But what do you have in your hands? What do you have in your heart? What word has gone forth? You'll be amazed how powerful what you currently have is. Do not look down on yourself. Do not look down on what God has already done in and through you. Do not look down on the skills, the talents, the giftings, the abilities, even the common sense that you have. Do not look down on the wisdom that you have gained over the years of constantly hearing the word of God, worshiping God, the presence of God around you, anointing falling all over you, do not despise 
what God has already deposited on the inside of you. There are people here that will do great things. But we have to change our mindset and our mentality to fit in with that which God has already done. May your faith arise on account of this word. May you see yourself as God sees you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And David, you know, had four different kinds of people that tried to discourage and to stop him. Number one, his family tried to stop him and discourage him. Number two, the soldiers of Israel tried to discourage and to stop him. Number three, the king himself, Saul, tried to discourage him and to stop him. Before he even now got to number four, Goliath himself. Sometimes the challenge is there, the issue is there. I said that is not enough. Even before you tackle the issue, you have those who are supposed to be friends, family, who should understand. Unfortunately, because of lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, because of their own insecurity, their own fear, where they are at, they might think they are doing you a favor by holding you back. Because they think you are just going to commit suicide by taking that thing on. But they have not experienced God the way you have experienced God. They have not known God the way you have known God. They were not there when God anointed David. They were not there when Samuel poured all on him and said, God has anointed you as king over Israel. So your experience of God is vital. Now, in the midst of counselors, there is safety, but they have to be counselors. There are counselors and then there are critics. There are counselors and then there are accusers. There are counselors and then there are fearful people. They've got to be who? Counselors. Counselors. So, how did his family try to stop him? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. Is somebody getting something here today? Yes. Um, let's back up a bit to verse 26. 1 Samuel 17, 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? I like David. <laughs> David said, What's in it for me? Let's talk. Not after I have killed him. Before I kill him, what are you guys going to do? You know, for who is this? Look at the words he used. Who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Let's stop there before we go. Mm. David did not see a giant, a mighty man of war that had been threatening the armies of Israel. No, he saw somebody who was not circumcised, who does not know God, and who is not of the people of God. Mm. So David did not look in the flesh, he looked in the spirit. Mm. And when he looked in the spirit, he saw somebody that is not of God. Mm. He saw himself of God. He saw somebody that is not circumcised. Mm. He saw himself circumcised. He saw a Philistine, and then he saw himself a child of God. And he said, the battle is over. Mm. That's why he asked that question. Mm. How do you see the problem? With what eyes are you looking at the problem? Whose report will you believe? The Bible says, I will believe the report of the Lord. What does the report of the Lord say about that situation? What does the word of God say about that situation? They say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. How, what, what is your zeal for the things of God? David looked at the situation and said, ah, ah. The armies of the living God and this uncircumcised Philistine, mm. there is no contest. <clears throat> there is no contest. And he wasn't boasting, he meant it. Why? Because he had experienced the powers of this living God. And then in verse 27 he said, And the people answered him. <laughs> in this manner saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. So they told him, Okay, Saul said, If you're killing, well, so and so will Paul do. I mean, will, will Saul the king do? In, 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 uh, 
And then verse 28. Now, Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David. I pray that God will give you discernment to know when people around you mean well, but yet might stop you from going forward. I pray God will give you wisdom to be able to discern and to separate the two. Amen. So that you are not fighting those who, with the best of what they know, believe, genuinely believe they are trying to help you. Whilst at the same time, you gently put that aside and you go forward to accomplish what God has for you. So Eliab generally believed that David just was about to kill himself, basically. He said, but then, he said his anger was aroused against David, and he said, why did you come down here? Now, from verse 28, we get an understanding of how Eliab has known David and, and, and his perception of David, how he sees David. This is very vital. Sometimes we allow how other people see us to become how we see ourselves, and then we conform and limit ourselves and what we believe and what we can do to what other people, especially some who might be in places of authority over us, or how they can limit what God has put on the inside of us because of how they see us. For example, when the same children of Israel we are going to conquer the land that God said, I have already given you. Mm. Moses sent how many spies? Oh. Twelve spies. Ten went and came back. And they said things like this. There were giants in the land. And in their eyes, we were like grasshoppers. Mm. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how did they get into their head? Mm. And then look through their eyes mm -hmm. and see how they looked at them, that they were like grasshoppers. Fear can paint all sorts of pictures. Mm. Even if those people thought that they were like grasshoppers, they had already believed it. Mm. So they went back to Moses and said, forget, mission impossible. Mm. But then there were two. What are their names? Caleb, Caleb and Joseph and, and Joshua. Mm. And they saw differently. The difference was what you see and what you believe. They said, yes, there are giants in the land. Mm. But God, our God, is going to strengthen us. We'll take them back. The land was already given, but there were challenges, Amalekites, Jebusites, they are not related to them, <laughs> and all the arts. They were in the land, the giants. So, that God has given something to you does not mean that there won't be challenges. That God has given you a land does not mean that there might be no giants there. In the case of David, Goliath became the stepping stone to the next level rather than an obstruction because the power to take down Goliath was already on the inside. It's somebody get to something here. Yeah. So the first opposition he came against was from his family, Eliab, his oldest brother. Verse 28, why did, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep? Did you see that? Few sheep. Uh, he's a small boy. A shepherd over few sheep. Go back and look after the few sheep of our father. This is for big boys. <laughs> you are a small boy. Go look after the few sheep. Don't abandon your duty. They saw him, Eliab saw him as a small boy with small responsibility. And even that small responsibility, it seems to be running away from it. That's how Eliab saw him. Now, David could have allowed himself to see himself as Eliab saw him. And say, oh, big brother, sorry. You are so right. I'm so sorry. Father said I should give this to you. Good luck with Goliath. And then he could have gone back. But that was not how he saw himself. Is somebody getting something? Yeah. Refuse to let the thoughts of other people limit you. Yeah. Refuse. Especially when God has spoken otherwise. You know, the culture that we come from, Lots of good things about the culture. But there are some areas that we need to change. Especially when people who mean good might even be parents. They can limit your ambition. They can limit how far you can aspire. Based on their own thoughts. 
And we've got to pull down all such strongholds. Amen. Love them, continue to honor them, but make it clear that you believe in this and God is with you. Amen. You cannot live your life based on other people's thoughts. You can't. You can't. It will limit you. It will limit you. Without going into details, because of time, most of you, if not all of you, already know about the testimony of how my dad died and the challenges and, we, and how we have to face the opponent people, both spiritually and face to face. I was less than two years old in the Lord. Oh, there were people that spoke to me about, <laughs> you want to die? I said, I'm already dead. <laughs> my life is sitting with God in Christ Jesus. You can't kill a dead person. Mm. Say something else. It is those that would dare to believe the word of God that the word of God will come true for. Amen. It is the word of God that you believe that will come through for you. Amen. So Eliab said, I know your pride. So the second accusation was that first they tried to belittle him put him down in his place. Some people think they know your place. And they want to make sure that it's their job to put you in your place. And when they say your place, it's usually not a high place. When they talk like that, it's usually a low place. But yet God has spoken concerning you. That he will exalt you. Amen. And he will put you on your own high places. Amen. What are you going to believe? So first try to belittle him. Then he brought accusation. He said, you are proud and arrogant. Then he said, you are insolent, which means you just do your own thing. You are disobedient to authority. And finally, Eliab said, okay, you are just curious, a curious busybody. He tried everything. Look, it's all there. He said, who have you come? Why did you come here? To whom have you left the few sheep? You little boy with looking after few sheep. Just go back to the few sheep in the wilderness. I know your pride. You are proud and arrogant. And the insolence of your heart. You are an insolent person that just likes to do what you want to do. You are disobedient and rebellious. For you have come down to see the battle. You are just curious. You are a busybody. Mm -hmm. It tried everything. The second opposition that David faced was from the soldiers themselves. Look at verse 29. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? David had something on the inside, fire in his bones. He says, can't these people see what I'm saying? Isn't there a reason to take, what are you guys talking about? And then in verse 20, 30, then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. So basically, he left Eliab and then he spoke to the soldiers, the other soldiers around. And they told, they spoke to him in the same way that Eliab did. Basically to say, you're a small boy, go home. This is for we big boys. Big boys that have been running back and forth from Goliath each time he stepped out. <laughs> each time Goliath stepped out, he run back in. When one of our children was very young, we had this video of David and Goliath. And, and she, she, would, she would have been around, what, three years or something like that? And she would sit in front of the TV. But they made that cartoon to be quite, you know, quite real. And, and, and Goliath would come out, boom, boom, boom. And as Goliath was coming out, she was sitting and she was going back also. <laughs> so, in the same way, he spoke to the soldiers. Now, these are soldiers. They have been trained for war. Mm. David had not. So again, there was a good excuse for David to say, oh boy, it's true. Mm -hmm. If soldiers are talking like this, who am I? Mm -hmm. I've not been to battle. I haven't been to military school. Mm -hmm. I haven't had it. So he could have turned back. That was the second opportunity for him to turn back. Who are the experts, quote and unquote, that are saying to you, you cannot do it? Mm -hmm. The same person that I was, daughter I was talking about, I remember when we were trying to get them to certain grammar schools. And they did this assessment. There was an assessment place. And, you know, the lady that did the assessment said, well, we've done the assessment. We think they are good enough for this 
grammar schools, but this one that you mentioned, nah. They were experts. They have all sorts of letters after their name. And they've been running this assessment center for years. So my wife and I thought about it and said, ah, we're still going for that one. She's good enough for it. <laughs> and we rejected the expert, and she got into it. David had something, had heard from God. The soldiers, obviously, they might be experts, but they are running from the guy. They have no solution. So why would you listen to people who don't have the solution to the problem? Then the third person that tried to dissuade David was the king himself. So, now, verse 31. Now, when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him, he sent for David. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Listen, he was a 17 year old boy. He was talking to the king. And he was telling the king, let no man's heart fail because of this Goliath. To the king. I don't want to, to, to really understand the context of this. He said, your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. In fact, the way he calls him, this Philistine. Again, how do you see the challenge? How do you see the problem? Do you see it from a spiritual perspective? Are you seeing it the way God sees it? Or are you seeing it from a, from, from a, from a physical level? And Saul said to David, that's amazing. I've been looking for somebody to take Goliath down. All those soldiers, useless. Training and all the worst, they can't even take him down. Yes, go ahead and take the, the, the Philistine down, Goliath. Is that what he said? No. That's not what he said. And Saul said to David, verse 33, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth and he, a man of war from his youth. That's the king. So first his brother, oldest brother, knocked him down. The soldiers knocked him down. He went to the king. The king finished the whole matter. That is enough excuse to say, I tried. I cannot go back to my ship. It's not my problem anymore. But David said, that's not the God I serve. And I'm speaking to somebody here that would dare to believe the word of God mm. and go and take on that which God has spoken to you. Yes. And speaking to somebody who has received the word of prophecy, mm. that the, the opportunity, the promotion has been provided, mm. it might come like a challenge. Yeah. But like David, you will step over the challenge, you will take down the challenge, mm. and that act by itself will now propel you mm. into that which God has for you. But David said to Saul, 34, your servant, I like his testimonies. What's your testimony? What's your testimony? The, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. You might think keeping sheep, testimonies coming out of that, has nothing to do with going to battle against Goliath and taking him down. You will be wrong. The principles are transferable. God will train you sometimes in little things, or He will train you well. Mm. And then the training and the knowing of God that you have in little things, it will now give you something that seems a lot bigger. Mm. But it's not by your power. Amen. It's not by might. Amen. It's by the Spirit of God. Amen. The same God that was with David on the back streets of the wilderness, looking after the sheep, mm. is the same God Amen. that is with him concerning Goliath. Yeah. It's not about the size of the problem. No. It's about the size of your God. Yes. Does somebody get this? Yes. It's about the size of your God. Mm. What is the project? What's the vision? Mm. What's the dream? How big is it? Mm. Line it up to your God. How big is your God? Mm.